Hello, hello, it's Thumbset here. Here's an item on number theory. K, L, M, N, N are positive integers such that K plus L plus M plus N is equal to KM and is also equal to LN. Find all the possible values of K plus L plus M plus N. Credits to Fayeye Ezekiel for this item. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. Now, we're technically given with more than one inequality. So we have k plus l plus m plus n is equal to km, and k plus l plus m plus n is equal to ln, and kn plus ln. Technically, technically, we're given with three, but let us try to increase um, this because, well, we should have four in four equations because we have four variables here. And well, these aren't positive integers, so they should be a little bit easier to work with. But let us try to make this equation into one equation that has all four variables. So we know that k plus l plus m plus n is equal to km plus ln, but let's try to make this a little bit better. I'm going to double k plus l plus m plus n. So 2k plus 2l plus 2m plus 2n and I'll be making this equal to km plus ln. So since k plus l plus m plus n is equal to km and ln at the same time, uh, this equation must hold true. Now, let's, I'm going to put everything into one side, and you guys can kind of, some of you guys may um, predict what I'm going to do next because I kind of grouped km, k, and m into the first three, and ln, l, and n in the last three. And yes, we're going to do some factoring but not really the factoring the entire thing, but factoring the first three and the last three. And we're going to use Simon's favorite factoring trick to help us continue this process. So by the same as uh, we're gonna add four to the blue and the green expression to prepare for the Simon's favorite factoring trick. So KM minus 2K minus 2M plus four plus LN minus 2L minus 2M plus four. And obviously I added two fours, so the right hand side here becomes an eight. Now, we can use factoring by grouping, technically. I can factor the blue expression as k times m minus 2, minus 2 times m minus 2. That's how you can get this one. And once we can do similar, this similar to, we can do something similar in the green expression. So we should end up in the following new equation. And this equation is a little bit better than this one because, well, these four terms are of degree one, and we have a degree um, like km out of nowhere, and this kind of relates to ln. So uh, it's a little bit better to kind of have something like this, which is kind of symmetrical. So like km ln um, doesn't really matter what the order is. So for if km ln works, then any permutation of that will also work. And we can just kind of add this to the equation that we're given with and try to work on with the solutions. So. Obviously, because this is a given, uh, this is a given, and then this is the new equation that we got. Well, obviously, what all of the solutions that we have should satisfy both, because those two things must be true. Now, I'm going to consider k equals 1 and k equals 2. Now, why 1 and 2 to be specific? Now, now that we have like everything to be like this equation, be symmetric, we can, I can, without lots of generality, let's just say k equals 1, k equals 2 for now. I'm just using k, but that's going to be true for all the variables as well because of the symmetric, because of the thing that we have with um, symmetric equations. Now, uh, the reason why I choose 1 and 2 is because it's kind of, it's going to mess up with the signs in these four terms. So for example, k equals 1, then k minus 2 would be negative, and that's kind of um, a little bit bad when dealing with um, equations here because, well, generally we don't really want sign changes because, well, if k is greater than 3, well, then no problems with the signs here. But if k, go, if k equals 1 or k equals 2, actually this kind of represents for, um, for all, all four variables. If k equals 1 or if any of the variables are 1, that's going to be what we're going to deal with. And if any of the variables are 2, that's also what we're going to deal with. But again, without also generality, Let's just make it k because of the symmetric uh, property we have here in the equation. So for example, if k equals 1, then 
I'll use the second equation, or which is the equation that we're given with. But I'm only going to use this part. I'll be able to get that 1 plus L plus M plus N. That's going to equal M. And I can cancel the M. And I'll be able to get that 1 plus L plus N is equal to 0. Well, but since we know that L and N are positive integers, we're pretty sure that the left side is going to be positive. So, well, that's a simple proof for us that K cannot be equal to 1 or any of the variables, actually. So none of the variables here can be equal to 1. Again, I'm just kind of using k equals 1 because of, um, um, without loss of generality. So there we go. But from this, we can guess that none of the variables here can be equal to 1. Because a similar proof, just, what, just like what we've shown for k equals 1 is going to follow, we'll be able to get something like this. And yeah, there we go. Now, next, let's try k equals 2. Now, if k equals 2, uh, essentially, this part just becomes gone. So we're just kind of dealing with L minus 2 times N minus 2 is equal to 8. And we just kind of have to make sure that uh, obviously the given equation must be correct. So let's try to do some case work on L minus 2 times N minus 2 being equal to 8. And it's nice that we have something factors here because we can just focus on obviously the factors of 8. Now L and N, they cannot both, they cannot be equal to 1 because of the thing we showed a while ago and I'm pretty sure both of them cannot be equal to 2 because well if any of them is equal to 2 it's gonna be 0 equals 8 impossible so L and N they're both greater than 3 uh, sorry, they're both greater than or, or equal to 3 which is gonna tell me that both of these terms are gonna be positive so I'm just going to focus on the positive factors of 8 so uh, it's not it doesn't really matter which 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 is larger here so uh, let's just say without loss of generality L minus 2 is the bigger factor and N minus 2 is the smaller factor. Now, I'm just going to list down the possible factors of 8 and I guess that's going to be the possible um, arrangements or like the assignments of factors. Now, if I solve for L and N in the first possible case, I'll get L equals 8, oh, sorry, L equals 10 and N equals 3. Now, if L equals 10 and N equals 3, LN is 30. So Km must be 30 as well. Now K equals 2, so in effect, we will be able to get that M must be equal to 15. All right, so we have four variables. It's just a matter of checking if it's actually possible. So K plus L plus M plus N is 2 plus 10 plus, N, uh, 2 plus 10 plus 15 plus N, and that's indeed equal to 30. So here we have one possible value of k plus l plus m plus n. So from the 8, 1 case, I'll be able to get 30 as a possible sum. So let's just try to rem remember this for now, and let's try to move on with the next case. So if the two factors are 4 and 2, this is going to give me uh, l being equal to 6 and n being equal to 2, uh, sorry, 4. And this is going to give me ln to be 24. Well, k is 2, so 2m is 24. I will be able to get from this that m is equal to 12. Now we have the four variables, so it's just a matter of checking. So 2 plus 6 plus 12 plus 4, that's indeed equal to 24. So here we have another possible value of k plus l plus m plus n to be 24. So no other possible cases. So that's going to be it. Now again, without loss of generality, I'm assuming k equals 2 here, but rest assured, if you make m to be 2, n to be 2, l to be 2, or k to be 2, we will be still, we'll still be getting the exact same result. Again, because there's a lot of symmetric stuff and it's, we can easily interchange the variables, that's the reason why we can assume all of these stuff without, um, without having to worry about, okay, what if any of these variables are, any of these variables are switched up? All right. Uh, anyways, for k equals 1 and k equals 2, we have these two possible values for k plus l plus m plus n. So, everything we have to do is just focusing on k is equal to 3 and above. Now, so, now that we've shown the all, all the possible cases, if any of the variables are 2, the other cases we're going to consider is all of the variables being greater than or equal to 3, which means all of these four numbers, k minus 2, m minus 2, l minus 2, n minus 2, they're all positive. So now 
we can use the fact that, well, these two numbers must be positive, so I can just easily assign 7, 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 4, 4. And I'm going to make a lot of assumptions here without loss of generality. So the first one, I'm going to assume without loss of generality that k minus 2 times m minus 2 is greater than or equal to l minus 2 times n minus 2. Again, switching them doesn't really matter because switching them is technically putting the km, k and the m to l and n and obviously vice versa. And since I can interchange k and m and l and n, so I have this second and third assumptions here. k is greater than or equal to m, l is greater than or equal to n. So rest assured, all of these assumptions that we're making, we're not really going to miss any of the cases. It's just a little bit of an easier way for us to kind of list down and to make sure that we don't miss any cases and we don't have to worry about um, those other permutations of solutions that might, that might be possible. Anyways, so let's try to deal with this. So if the first number, k minus 2 times m minus 2, that's 7. Well, 7 is a prime number, so it must be 7 times 1. So, well, since k is greater than or equal to m, this factor must be the 7, so k minus 2 must be 7. So this is going to give me k equals 9, and m minus 2 must be equal to 1. And from here, we have k times m, so km to be 9. So let's try to check if it's possible for here. But the problem with 1 is that this forces l and n to both be equal to 3, because the only way we can get to 1 is just 1 times 1. So there we go. Um, L and N is equal to 3. L and N, um, we add up to, sorry, they are both equal to 3. So KM is 9 and L is, LN is 9. This is possible. But this doesn't help with K plus L plus M plus N because K is already 9 and K plus L plus M plus N, that's a value of 16. So I guess this is not a possible case for this question. So um, it's impossible to have 7 and 1 to be the distribution of the numbers here. So let's try to move on to the next case. Let's try this, um, the first number here being 6. So we can consider possible factors of 6. Or we can factor it as 6, 1. Again, the first factor is bigger than the second because of our assumptions here. So the first factor is 6, 1. That's going to give me k equals 8 and uh, m equals 3. And the second possible assignment is 3, 2. That's going to give me k equals 5 and m equals 4. So let's try to check with these in a while. Now, 2 is a prime number, so there's only one possible way. It's just 2, 1. That's the only possible assignment of factors. So L must be equal to 4 and N must be equal to 3. Well, but the thing is, LN, the product of L and N, a product of, yeah, the product of L and N is 12. But 8 times 3 is 24, 5 times 4 is 20. No possible case because it doesn't satisfy this km equals ln part. So we can safely say that no solutions are possible here. All right, next, let's try the 5. 5 is a prime number, so there's only one possible pair. k equals 7 and m equals 3. That gives 21. Now let's try the 3. Well, again, 3 is a prime number, so uh, l must be 5 and n must be 3. Well, again, doesn't really satisfy the km equals ln case, so this is going to be impossible. Now last, let's try the 4, 4 case. So 4 is not prime, but we can easily try to get the factors. Uh, one possible assignment is 4 and 1. So that's going to give me k equals 6, k equals 6, and m equals 3. Now the other possible case is 2, 2. Now that's going to give me k and m both equal to 4. All right. Well, obviously, it's just the same, same case for l and n. So um, the first possible case is l equals 6 and n equals 4. And the second possible case here is, oops, n equals 3, sorry. And the second possible case here is l equals n equals 4. Now, if k equals 6 and m equals 3, km would be 18. And, well, this is possible, L equals 6 and N equals 3, that's going to give 18. But let's try to check if K plus L plus M plus N is also 18. So K is 6, L is 6, M is 3, N is 3. So yes, indeed, 6 plus 6 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 18. So we've just acquired another possible value of K plus L plus M plus N, which is 18. 
So let's write this down. So from the k equals 6, m equals 3 case, we're going to get 18 as another possible value of k plus l plus m plus n. Now, the last possible, k equals m equals 4, this kind of goes well with l equals m equals 4 because k, m, and l, n, they're both equal to 16. But if all of them are 4s, k plus l plus m plus n is also equal to 16. So there we go. We have another possible value of k plus l plus m plus n. Now that we, now that we exhausted all the possible cases, we're going to list down the possible values that we got. 16, 18, and then from our previous slide, we have 24 and 30. So the possible values of k plus l plus m plus n are these four. We have 16, 18, 24, and 30. And you guys can go back to um, um, this and this to kind of just check what are the values of k, l, m, and n that work in this case. So these are the four answers, and these will be our final answers. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.